We're currently in our sixth season with our third team chasing the American dream of trying to win the CONCACAF Champions Cup. We have tried three times with Vancouver FC and failed to get out of the first round each and every time. We have one month and eight matches to build a team that can do better. And we've already begun to put in motion the plan to make that happen. Welcome back to episode number 42 of the American Dream. I am Mr. Cellophane. We've brought in a new set-piece coach who is head and shoulders above the one that we had. We've already made a couple of player moves. Sent out a bunch of youngsters on loan that are just currently taking up time and wages on our bench. We did try to pull off what I was looking to be our key centerpiece move, and that's picking up 22-year-old Costa Rica international Marco Diaz. He's already kept 29 times for his team. Sadly for us, he has opted to go to MLS and join the New England Revolution, even though we think he's going to get more playing time and be more successful in his home country. Say la vie. We have also made the decision to put the 31-year-old Brazilian Ramon on the transfer list, we are trying to drum up some interest. Remember, we talked about last episode, we can only have five foreign players, and we have six. Now, only five are currently registered. That's because one of them is off at the African Cup of Nations. So it gives us a little bit of a reprieve while he's out representing his country. But we have decided that Ramon is going to be potentially the odd man out so we're looking to move him on to trim those numbers down because the last thing we want to do is actually be paying a player that we've had to unregister better to get something rather than nothing first and foremost though is getting past the Cartagena's team that denied us victory in the grand final when we first joined the team just about a month ago one change to the starting lineup from the team that absolutely dismantled Liberia, and that is going to be an, our attacking right wing. Johnny Castro is coming in in place of Guillermo Sanchez, who will drop down to the bench. So it's going to be Cortez in goal, a back four of Gonzalez, Inocenti, Taylor, and Herrera. Chacon and Brand manning the midfield. Marrera at the 10, Casada Thorne, and the aforementioned Castro on the wings. And Edward Lopez, once again, leading the line as our striker. 13 goals on the season I think he's earned the right although to be fair Esteban Cordero uh, sitting on the bench he's got 12 so it's really kind of six and one half dozen another but Lopez did score in the last match so we are going with the guy that has gotten us this far until he proves otherwise Cartagena wearing the white we are once again in the purple with the sky blue stripe and we are underway at home, Innocente in control about two and a half minutes in, but he's going to lose control to Montero. Carmago trying to play it ahead, can't get it past Taylor. Marrera across to the right, Castro cutting it inside before carrying it into the box, shooting it on, and Vallegas is going to get a hand on it and redirect that behind. It'll be an early corner kick opportunity for Saprisa, and Brand is going to take it from the far side. Nice crowd here. Uh, in Saprisa, very happy about that. Lopez uh, can't get his head on that, and Cartagena will be able to clear. Marrera playing it up into the box. Carmaga would take down Casada Thorn, but he was sadly offside, and the whistle will blow. And turnover for Saprisa. Valencia to throw it in. Can't get it past Gonzalez. Chacon in control. In the middle third, moving it to his right and taking his time. Perkins will stick his foot in there and get it to Camargo, whose shot will be handled by Cortez. And no harm, no foul on, frankly, what was a very disappointing turnover. Contreras sending in the corner. It will be whistled as a penalty. Yellow card coming out for Alejandro Bran. And that's just adding insult to injury as Camargo will step up. And take the penalty, gets it past Cortez, who did guess correctly, and it is Saprisa nil, Cartagena won. I mean, so far this game is a functional repeat of the first leg of the grand final, where the only difference was a Cartagena penalty converted. Ball played forward, Gonzalez will gain control for Cartagena, throwing it ahead, Inocente will settle it down, Brown's got it, he'll play it to his midfield partner, Chacon, Morera. In for Castro. He'll shoot. Tuck it inside that far corner. And Johnny Castro with his first goal of the season. Beautiful feed from Diego Moreira. And this game is once again equal at one. I feel like this game is 
going to come down to which team has the most opportunities and the best opportunities because I think it will be Saprisa. We're already out shooting uh, Cartagena 6-2. to two. Their only shot on target is obviously the penalty that they scored. So tied at one as we head into the halftime interval. I think if we just get more chances like the one Johnny Castro was able to take advantage of, we will be just fine. Let's give the revenge team talk as we head out onto the pitch for the final 45 and uh, Saprisa turning things on. Oh, I had things backwards. It was Cartagena with more opportunities than us. But I, I still think my original point stands. Ball set long. Gonzalez playing it ahead. Montero will play it back to his defensive line. Alfaro up to Alfaro. His pass, though, cut off by Innocente. Chacon up for Lopez. Lopez with a drive from range. And it's going to go out of the reach of Villegas, but also off target and out for a goal kick. Played ahead. Castro loses control. Amud will play it ahead for Montero. He's got men around him. Nice uh, slide tackle by Gonzalez, but Parkins comes away with it. And his shot will sail over the crossbar. So opportunities on either end that fail to hit the target within the first 10-15 minutes of this second half. It's 9-9. Nine to nine. Your shot's on goal. Villegas sending it into the Saprisa end. Taylor will deal with it. Herrera. Up the right side, Castro. He's playing a bit narrow. Ahead for Lopez. Lopez in traffic will just drop it back for Alejandro Braun. Castro turns. Marrero. Mm. He had a chance. Maybe if he just took a second to get his bearings a little bit. He kind of did one of those. Received the ball, turned, and shot all at the same time. And ultimately, it didn't trouble the goalkeeper at all. Contreras in control for Cartagena. Moving it up that far sideline. He will be overtaken by Castro and Saprisa once again with the ball. Bran ahead for Marrera. Has an outlet on his right. It's Herrera. Daniel Herrera will chip it into the middle looking for Casada Thorne who gets his head on it. Puts it past Villegas for his seventh goal of the year. And Saprisa has come back to take a 2-1 lead. We do have some tired legs out there. Bron, Chacon, Marrera all feeling a little bit winded. We are going to get at least... Two of them off as Marrero is going to come out. Alvarado feeling a little anxious, but he is going to go in the game because, frankly, we absolutely need him. Same with Emilio Lara. He is going to come in in place of Emmanuel Chacon. Quesada Thorne laying it back for Gonzalez. We have made the changes yet. Alfaro knocks it away, but Chacon's got it. Gonzalez up for Quesada Thorne. We'll have to backtrack. Chacon into the box. Quesada Thorne beats the goalkeeper, but ultimately can't get it on target as he sends it across the goal mouth and out for a goal kick. 20 minutes remaining in the match. Saprisa so enjoying a 2-1 lead, and how sweet would it be for us to get revenge on the one team that has beat us here so far? Yes, we've only managed two matches, but it is a big deal. We are even in shots on goal. Uh, XG is still favoring Cartagena, mainly from the massive boost they got in the beginning of this match off of the penalty. But Zaprisa is going to hang on. 2-1 is your final. We got our revenge and started this run of eight matches into the CONCACAF Champions Cup on the right foot. The trick is, how long can we keep this going? Judging from the very beginning of the match against AD Sarchi, not that long as Selena sent it into the middle. Cortez Came out for it, but Fioli got there first, got his head on it, and made it 1-0 to the bad guys. We did rotate our squad a little bit. Cordero made the start, picked up his 13th goal of the year to equalize just about five minutes later. And then it was the Alvarado show. Alejandro Alvarado getting the start at the number 10. Scored not once, not twice. Well, he will in a moment as Brand will send it in. But three times picking up the hat trick, his first three goals of the season. Of course, Sarchi was going to get one back in the interim as Fioli picked up his second of the match. But there is Alvarado. And this one was yet another blast from range. He actually had two of these from outside of the box, finding the top of the net to give Saprisa a 4-2 victory. Meanwhile, some additional moves have been made. We've loaned out 20-year-old Argentinian Aaron Vieira. He's a center back for us. 
pretty highly rated and a decent player. But again, we are just full of foreign players right now. So we had to move a few of them off the roster. Vieira, well, he was on that list. And we've also sold mediocre winger Luis Diaz. Yes, he is Costa Rican, but at 31 years old, he really didn't have much of a future here. A very highly rated player. However, I think our scouts and our coaching staff had a higher opinion of him than we did. We shipped him off to Bosnia for $575,000. Which has made room for a couple of more younger Costa Rican players. The first one is a highly talented prospect. He is a right back by trade. Could potentially play on the left-hand side as well. 18-year-old U-20 international Hugo Cordero. Uh, not a ton of speed, but he's a very fit player and very defensively minded. Very high work rate as well. We think he's going to fit in very well for us both now and in the future. We picked him up for $78,000. He's already worth up to 1.5 million. In fact, we had to bake in a release clause of 1.1 million to other clubs in Costa Rica. So while we are looking for him to be a big part of our future here at Saprisa, he could be an even bigger part if he funds our future by moving on and we make a tidy profit. We also did make a move for another midfielder, 25-year-old Colombian Costa Rican dual national Luis Uzme. He is a body with a tremendous passing ability. He's got great vision. He's decent off the ball, makes very good decisions. We are going to look to train him to be a backup in Ganche, although we appear to have quite a few serviceable number 10s already on our roster. What's one more? Now, you may have noticed of the outgoing players, Ramon was not listed amongst them, and he was magical against Cariari Pococci. Feeding Cordero for his 13th goal of the year. Then Ramon picking up his second assist as he gathers the loose ball. Pops it into the middle. Sanchez's header goes in off of the crossbar to make it 2-0. Saprisa, look who's got it again. It's Ramon up the left wing. This time feeding it once again for Sanchez. Potting his header home. Second goal of the match for Sanchez. 3-0. And then Ramon feeding Chacon. This time Engubane getting in on the action. Chacon across. Finding Sanchez for the hat trick. Engubane coming back off of his AFCON duty with South Africa. Now 30 seconds remaining in stoppage time. Gamboza will pick up his first goal of the year to claw one back for Cariari Pacochi. But Ramon is like, hold my beer, off of the corner, hooks up within a centi for his first goal of the year and a very easy 5-1 victory at home for Saprisa. We weren't as dominant on the road against San Carlos, but we did prove our point. Orlando Sinclair actually put the home team ahead 1-0 in the fifth minute. But a goal by Esteban Cordero tied things up before Orlando Sinclair Late in stoppage time in the first half, actually put San Carlos up 2-1 at the break. But a couple of minutes after they restarted for the second half, Eduardo Lopez scored. Freddy Gonzalez added one coming in off of the bench in the 80th minute. And then a little help from Alejandro Zimmerman. And the own goal made it 4-2 Saprisa, five consecutive victories since the closing stage began. By the way, Ramon picked up two more assists in that match, but that is not the biggest news of the day. Saprisa have received a takeover approach. Rumors are that the current president, Juan Carlos Rojas, is looking to move on. The T-Bus Football Gazette is reporting an unnamed investor is looking to buy a controlling stake in the club, possibly with the view of floating the club on the stock market. Hopefully, if any takeover talks get serious and things start to move forward, it happens after the transfer window is closed. Although, to be fair, I think we are in a very good position. No glaring holes, maybe a tiny bit more depth at the defensive midfielder position, although Alejandro Brand has been fantastic, as has Emmanuel Chacon. Stefan Aquista is an 18-year-old who we have gotten into the rotation a little bit. He is a very solid third option. And we also cannot forget that Orlando Gallo and Gerard Taylor could also potentially play in that position. So I think at the end of the day, we are in excellent shape, which we did prove at home off of the corner as Gallo, Cordero, and Aquista all hook up 
to give Saprissa a 1-0 lead in the 92nd minute. We were a bit hard done. Uh, Santos did a decent job fending off our 20 shots, only letting in the one. So we massively underperformed our XG. Santos also controlled the ball quite a bit, keeping the possession 67% of the time. But ultimately, it's the wins on the board that matter. And we ran our winning streak to six which is right where we wanted to be as we headed on the road for a massive rivalry matchup against Alajuelense. Ball all the way across. Quesada Thorne putting it home for his eighth of the year in the 30th minute to open up the scoring. Moving to the second half, Quesada Thorne is going to be the engine that makes things run this time as he passes it into the middle, gets it past three defenders onto the right foot of Lopez, his 15th goal of the year. Lopez had a chance to add a second with about five minutes remaining, but he shanked it wide. A couple of late opportunities opportunities for Ala Jolense went a bagin 2-0 your final score second consecutive clean sheet for Manuel Cortez seven victories in a row a new club record which led nicely into a home contest against Perez Zeladon coming in with just the one win in the closing stage and Elian Casada Thorne remained red hot scoring in the 63rd 67th and 81st minutes thought that Manuel Cortez was going to pick up his third consecutive clean sheet but Juan Carlos Hernandez had other ideas scoring in the fourth minute of second half stoppage time only the fourth shot on goal for Perez Zeladon but cruising to yet another victory as we ran our win streak to eight which as you might expect puts us in a favorable position on the table after eight matches in the closing stage of the Primera División de Costa Rica we are at the top of the table eight zero and zero, 24 points a plus 16 goal difference now we're meeting up with the team right behind us in Punta Arenas FC for our final match before we head into the continental competition in tomorrow's episode Frankly, a massive matchup for our 200th match in management. Cortez is going to get the start in goal. He has been perfect for us so far. Our back four has been tremendous. Gonzalez, Inocente, Ngubane, and Herrera getting the starts. Brandon Chacon will man the midfield. Marrero, once again, is going to sit in the number 10 spot behind Esteban Cordero. Casada Thorne, red hot, getting the start on the left side. Ramon, also red hot getting the start on the right. And I know I'm tempting fate by saying this, but a win today will put us nine points clear at the top of the closing stage table. Two wins, three draws in their last five matches for Punta Arenas. Obviously, Saprissa, we know where we are. We've won eight in a row. Brand new goalkeeper. We've made some changes to the outfield team as well. So far, we have pushed all of the right buttons since the closing stage began. Now, Punta Arenas, their pitch is going to be a little bit shorter than we are used to, so not as much distance between the two goals. However, it is another wide pitch, and our system is currently very well suited for a wide pitch. Now, we ha do have a secondary tactic that we've been training that we haven't used in a match yet that is a bit more narrow, and on the back post, Alejandro Braun waits for it, but he will be deemed... Offside. Six shots on golden nil in favor of Saprissa through the first 30 minutes or so. It has been all Saprissa all afternoon long. But so far on the scoreboard, nothing to show for it since the brand goal got called back. Just a single shot on goal for Punta Arenas so far until now. Monumentally disappointing. But Saprissa on the kickoff. Herrera playing it for Chacon, feeding Ramon. Playing it ahead, looking for Cordero. It'll be intercepted, but Innocente picking off the clearance. Innocente with the drive from range. And IU getting his hands on it, knocking it behind. So a corner opportunity for Saprisa. A chance to tie it up. And Bran looking to take that opportunity. Near corner. Sending it across, but IU is just going to leap up. Grab that out of the air. And that should do it for the first half. Two shots on goal for Punta Arenas, one on target. It resulted in a goal off of the set piece. Meanwhile, we have found no joy on our 11 shots. Only getting two on target, well, that's something that we are going to need to improve. So we're going to ask the team to show a bit of desire. So we're going to we're gonna lay into them a little bit at the half. And this, this ain't great. Esteban Cordero picking up an injury in the first minute and a half. 
of this second half. Luckily, we have Ed Edward Lopez on the bench ready to come in. He has also been fantastic, but we are going to miss Cordero, I think, in the long term. Ramon with a corner opportunity. Look how much space there is outside of the box. And he connects with Nassim and Asente near post. Second goal of the season for the gigantic center back. And it is tied at one. They can score on the corner. We can score on the corner. I mean, if we draw this match, it will be disappointing, but not the end of the world. We'll still maintain that six-point lead. Obviously, we want to... Get a little bit more attacking and take advantage of our fantastic offense. Innocente almost sneaking past the second one. Serizuela up the right wing. Alfaro's got it. Moves past his man, chipping it into the middle. Torres can't win the header. Ramon will control, but he'll lose it again. Torres drops it. Maheta Salas. Alfaro hits inside the far post to give Punta Arenas the 2-1 lead. And just a minute later, Punta Arenas scores again. It's 3-1 off of a set piece. Torres hits the crossbar. Akbar Mana charges in, puts it past Cortez, who was out of position. We were busy making tactical changes, and we gave up a goal. Not going to do that again. Castro in possession. Lopez will drop it back for Innocente. We've moved our midfielders forward. We've also brought in uh, both Castro and Alvarado onto the pitch. Alvarado has hit knocked away, and Garces will take over. Akbar Mana feeding it forward, stepping up is Herrera. Ramon in control, back for Gubane, throwing it forward. Can't pick out Lopez. Chacon also can't get it to Lopez, but Castro takes over. His ball forward intended for Casada Thorne. Intercepted. Gonzalez steps up. Knocks it away. Lots of back and forth action. Casada Thorne for Lopez. Pushing it into the box. Taking a shot with the left foot. And Ayu getting his hand on it. Or at least I thought he did. It looks like it is going to skim off of the crossbar and go out for a goal kick. 15 minutes remaining in this match. And we really need to turn things on. If we want to uh, capture points, if we don't, our lead at the top of the table will be trimmed to just three. Can we get something back? Cortez lumping it long, looking for Alvarado. Garces will head it forward. Zamora settling it down before dropping it to his left back in Fernandez. Played forward. Alvarado will pick it off. He's got Lopez charging through the middle. Lopez tries to chip the keeper. Can't. It will be deflected out behind for a corner. Beautiful opportunity for Lopez that he could not take advantage of as IU makes himself huge. Ramon sending it in, looking for Innocente. Can't find him. Lopez can't win the header, but the clearance picked up by Casada Thorne, but that's where the activity is going to end. 17 to 7, your shots on goal in favor of Saprisa. Five shots on target for both teams, but Punta Arenas has taken advantage of their opportunities. 3-1 is the score. Five minutes added on at the end, and it looks like we are going to run out of time and suffer in our 200th match in charge of all teams in this save. Suffer our first defeat in the closing stage of the Primera División, which is a cause for concern because our next match is the opening leg of the CONCACAF Champions Cup preliminary round against Mazatlan. Good news for us, Esteban Cordero, only a tight calf, only going to miss training for a day or two. He should be ready as we take on the Mexican side, looking for our first opportunity to advance into the round of 16 in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. I hope you are here for that tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining me. If you like that video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you have not. If you're brand new, welcome in. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed your time here and you come back with everybody else for tomorrow's action in the CONCACAF Champions Cup against Mazatlan. Until then, bye-bye.